Everyone makes mistakes in life. And today, animals, my love, would like to share with you this story, which is more of a lesson for everyone so that they won't think the worst of animals. This story is about my first and only encounter with a rescue cat. We adopted a big ginger tomcat, and once we found out he had vicious tendencies, we named him Sid, as in Sid Vicious. He wasn't vicious at all at the RSPCA center. We were told Sid was about two years old. Wrong. I'd have put him nearer to ten. We were told he'd had all his treatments before we adopted him from the RSPCA. Wrong. His puke revealed a seething mass of wriggling red worms. Sid had a screw loose. He wasn't all there, I'm sure. Only to turn and attack you with full claws and teeth with no warning whatsoever. No bristling, no growling. Most cats do give a warning when they have had enough but not Sid. Just went from nice to absolutely fucking berserk, instantly. But then when he'd attack you, he used to look very surprised and run away in apparent shame. My mate Bill would get on the floor and play fight with Sid. I say play fight, but you should have seen the state of his arms afterwards, bloody and scratched. It'll be alright, Bill would say. He's only playing. Sid was terrified of the vacuum cleaner. He would shoot off into the kitchen and jump up at the back door, clinging to the wood between the glass panes a few feet off the floor. If I turned off the vacuum and went to lift him, speaking in a soothing voice, he would turn around and scratch me and run away. I did wonder if Sid had been abused at some point. He did not seem very fearful, but his sudden confusion after attacking us and other aspects and other aspects of his behavior made me think he was also somewhat deranged. That summer, my daughter became a toddler and had started toddling around in the back garden. Up until that point, Sid had never shared his garden or paid my daughter any heed. But as she toddled around, Sid ran up to her, jumped vertically on her, scratched and bit her, then ran off. He was a big cat and when standing on his hind legs, wasn't far off the full height of my daughter. He must have been terrifying to her. After a couple of these unprovoked attacks, I realized Sid could not really be allowed to stay in the house with young children. The final straw came when Sid, one morning, strolled into my son's room and attacked him. My son was a small baby at the time, lying in his cot and doing nothing whatsoever to the cat. Sid walked in, scratched my baby son on the face and ran off. The scratch was quite close to my son's eye and I decided there and then that Sid needed to be out of our house right away for the safety of my soul for the safety of my small children. I called the Cats Protection League and explained the situation, asking if they could rehome him. They say that knowing what had happened, they would have to be honest about his maniacal violent tendencies to any prospective adoptive cat parents, and that being the case, it was unlikely they could rehome him. So they wouldn't take him. It was a similar story when I phoned the RSPCA. I had to get Sid out of my home which is when I found myself calling the vet, in tears. They had a record of Sid, so I just said to the receptionist, Hello, I need to make an appointment to have Sid put down. I explained what he'd done, and that I had tried to call the animal shelters first, but they couldn't help me. She asked, And what sort of dog is Sid, please? So I replied, He's not a dog, he's a cat. She sounded very surprised at that, but she understood why I was doing what I was doing, and she booked him in for euthanasia. I took him to the vets the same day. I left him with them, which they offered to do. I regret that he died alone with nobody he knew to comfort him, but I was so upset and angry with him for attacking my son, for ruining his own chance of a safe forever home, for making me have to make this decision that was so awful and caused me terrible, terrible guilt and resentment that I paid and just walked away and left him there. At that moment, I abandoned him. Every animal I've ever had, and there have been many and varied, has had a forever home with me. They have all been loved and cared for, with their quirks fully accepted, but at that moment, I did not love Sid anymore. I was very, very angry, upset, and guilt-ridden. I was only young myself and had never had to make a decision to put an animal down before. But I knew in my heart 
It had to be done. He could not live in our home anymore. What I did was the only option, because the animal charities couldn't help. If I hadn't, if I hadn't had young children, and if it had only been adults on the receiving end of his attacks, I could have coped with that. I had scratches up my arms all the time, but I could have coped with that. He would have had a, he would have had a forever home with us. But small, defenseless children being preyed on, unprovoked by a large cat, just not acceptable and not workable. He had around two years with us. He had a nice two years in a loving family home. We gave him the best we could. <sighs> but you've got to draw a line when the situation cannot go on. What if that had been my son's eye? I'm shedding a little tear for Sid as we speak. I do not regret having him euthanized. But I do regret... But I do regret abandoning him and letting him die without me there. I will never do that again. <laughs> Poor lad. He couldn't help being deranged and I couldn't help being angry. <sighs> but I could have helped instead of abandoning him in the last half hour of his life. And for that, I'll forever feel like a shitty human being. Whatever the case may be, cats are still our family, so being there for them in their final moments is the least we could do. Please, don't ever walk out on a loved one like this. Animals My Love would like to spread the love of animals to people all around the world, and we are collecting moving stories about them. So if you have any, please send it in to us at our email, animalsmylove999 at gmail.com. Thank you so much, and we wish you all the best.